When we think of countries involved in World War II, we usually think of Germany, Japan, the United States, Britain, and the USSR. But what we don't usually think about is Poland. Yet, the deadliest conflict in human history started in Poland, when on September 1st, 1939, thousands of German soldiers, tanks, and aircraft poured over the Polish border. Germany invaded Poland because they wanted more living space for their people and to connect mainland Germany to eastern Prussia, a territory separated by the Polish Corridor. The Polish Corridor was a narrow strip of land owned by Poland that extended to the Baltic Sea and split Germany into two parts. Now, it's without question that Poland's army and industry was far inferior to Germany's at the time. However, Poland used a few models of armored vehicles during the Battle of Poland in September 1939. And as you might have guessed, in this video, we will overview the armored vehicles that Poland put into use in the Battle of Poland. The most recognizable tank in this video is probably the TK-3 tankette, a small tank used by the Polish defenders during the invasion of Poland. It was the most produced tank by Poland before the start of the war, with over 500 tankettes being produced. Poland wanted a small, fast, and easily produced light tank for their army, so in 1930, two prototypes for a small tank, or tankette, were created, called the TK-1 and the TK-2. These tanks were based off the British design called the Cardin Lloyd. Tankettes could use their maneuverability and small profile to be used efficiently as a reconnaissance tank. The TK series had modified suspension, allowing for a smoother ride, and the tracks were strengthened compared to the Cardin Lloyd. After modifications to the TK2, the TK3 was created, and production for the TK3 began in the beginning of July of 1931. Two people were required to man the tank, a driver and a gunner, who also served as the commander. The TK-3 used a 40 horsepower Ford A engine and the tank could reach a maximum speed of 25 miles per hour. The TK-3 had between 4 and 8 millimeters of armor. A variant of the TK-3, the TKS, had improved armor of 4 to 10 millimeters, wider tracks for better traction, and had an improved 42 horsepower engine called the Fiat 122 AC. The TK-3 was later upgraded to have a Fiat 122 BC engine of 46 horsepower. An important invention used in the TKS and later tanks was the Gundlach Periscope. The Gundlach Periscope was a rotating periscope that allowed the tank commander to have a 360 degree view from the turret. Before this, cutouts in the armor were made so the commander could see out and by removing this feature, the vehicle and those inside it were better protected. Both tanks were originally equipped with a single 7.92mm machine gun. After production began, it was quickly realized that a 7.92mm machine gun could not fight effectively against armored opponents. After some experiments, a 20mm autocannon was decided to be added as the weapon on the tankette. By the time the war started, the 20mm cannon was only added to about 24 TK-3s and TKSs. The cannon was more effective at piercing armored targets and could easily knock out Panzer IIs. Poland wanted a relatively fast and well-armored light tank instead of a heavily armored slow tank. Poland needed to create a new design to replace the aging TK-3 and TKS tankettes. Design work began in 1931, and production would start in 1935. The new tank would have improved firepower and protection. In the years prior to the war, Poland had purchased foreign models such as the French R-35 and the British Vickers Mark E. The 7TP would be based off and an improvement of the British Vickers Mark E. The 7TP would have more armor than the British tank and a liquid-cooled engine rather than being cooled by air. The new tank would also be issued with a Soar VBLD 110 horsepower diesel engine and was one of the first tanks to use a diesel engine. The 7TP was one of the most modern tanks in the Polish army at the time. The tank would stand 7 feet 5 inches tall, 15 feet 9 inches long, and 7 feet 10 inches wide. 
The 7TP had 17 millimeters of frontal armor, 13 millimeters armor on its side, 9 millimeters of armor for the roof and back, and 15 millimeters of armor on the front of the turret. Each tank had a crew of three, a driver, gunner, and commander. There are two variants of the 7TP, a twin turreted tank, similar to one of the Vickers Mark E's variants, or a single turreted tank. The twin turreted tank, called the 7TP DW, was equipped with two WZ-30 7.92mm machine guns. However, only being equipped with two machine guns, the 7TP DW lacked firepower to take out enemy tanks and was produced in limited numbers. 24 7TP DWs were produced in total by 1939. The single turreted tank, the 7TP JW, was armed with a 7.92mm machine gun and a powerful 37mm gun, which could effortlessly take out Panzer 1s, 2s, 3s, or even 4s if hit in the right area. Each tank had 80 rounds of ammunition for the 37mm gun and could fire at a rate of 1 round every 6 seconds. The 7TP also used the 360 degree gun lock periscope just like the TKS. The 7TP could move at 23 miles per hour on the road or 18 and a half miles per hour off road. Unlike German tanks, only a few 7TPs were equipped with the radios, making communication difficult and inefficient. Additionally, only 108 of the 7TPs with single turrets were produced by 1939. Despite the 7TPs having great firepower, the tank was produced in too little numbers to be effective against the thousands of tanks the Germans had. The 9TP was an improved version of the 7TP, as Poland wanted a more modernized tank that could replace the 7TP as the main combat tank. There were two other modern designs to replace the 7TP. They were the 10TP and the 14TP. Those tank projects were running behind schedule, so in 1938, it was decided to make improvements on the 7TP. The new tank could either have a SOAR CT-1D diesel engine or a modern PZI-NZ-725 gasoline engine, both of which were lighter than the 7TP's engine. Along with this, the new armor plating would be welded together, which strengthened the armor, unlike the bolted armor of the 7TP. The armor plating made the tank lighter, and because the new engine was lighter as well, more armor could be added and there was a great improvement on the armor on the 9TP. The tank had 40 millimeters of frontal armor and on the turret, 20 millimeters of side armor, and a 13 millimeter armor plate in the rear. The 9TP also used the same Bofors 37 millimeter gun and WZ-30 machine gun as the 7TP. By the time of the invasion of Poland in September 1939, Poland only had 11 9TPs and two prototypes in their inventory, so their effectiveness was limited. Poland used a few models of armored cars during the invasion of Poland. The most modern type, the WZ-34, was based off of a previous model called the WZ-28, which was designed in the 1920s. The WZ-28 was an armored car with a half-track. It had low speed, didn't perform too well off-road, and had a high center of gravity, so a new design was needed to replace it. In November of 1933, an order was given to remove the half-track and replace it with wheels. The wheels made the vehicle much faster, but had less off-road performance. The appearance of the new armored car looked nearly identical to the WZ-28, but some of the changes were to slightly lighten the top of the car and reinforce the hull in order to lower the car's center of gravity. Between 1934 and 1935, the older WZ-28s were converted into WZ-34s after tests were satisfactory with the WZ-34 prototype. By 1938, 87 WZ-28s had been successfully converted into WZ-34 models. Two crew members were needed to operate the WZ-34, a driver and a commander, who also served as the gunner. There were three versions of the WZ-34. There was the model that was just converted from the WZ-28, 
and didn't have many changes except for new wheels replacing the half track. This car could reach speeds of up to 33 and a half miles per hour when on the road. The next version, the WZ34-1, had an improved 23 horsepower engine. 27 of these models were created. The final and most produced model, the WZ34-2, had a 25 horsepower engine, a singular vision hatch instead of two, and sloped rear armor. The max speed for this car was 31 miles per hour on the road. The armor for all of these cars was between 6 and 8 millimeters. The WZ-34 was obsolete by the beginning of the war. It lacked armor, it suffered from mechanical failures, and had low firepower. About two-thirds of the vehicles were armed with a single 7.92 millimeter machine gun, so were mainly used for anti-infantry purposes. The final third of the cars were equipped with a French SA-1837 mm gun that could fire at a rate of one round every four seconds. The SA-1837 mm gun was World War I era, mainly intended for use against machine gun nests. Due to the low muzzle velocity, it had a shorter range, and its poor penetration meant it could only be effective against armored enemies at close range. WZ-34s armed with a 37mm gun destroyed only a few enemy vehicles. A lack of radio communication meant inefficient communication and coordination with other units. Operational records state that 55% of the vehicles were lost in combat, 35% broke down, and 10% were abandoned due to the lack of fuel. No original armored car survived the war. The tankettes and armored cars used by Poland during the invasion were clearly obsolete. Although the TK-3s and TKSs were available in moderate numbers, they lacked firepower and protection. Some of the more modern tanks, like the 70P and 90P, were able to stand up to the German tanks, but the Polish industry could not produce the needed war materials as fast as their German neighbors and lacked the numbers to fight effectively.